The Coffee Maker. Tadish! Hi there, Tom Thomas. Are you ready for school? Uh-huh. And you? I'm helping Masia today for school. Three more patients? How in the world can I do it all? I have that new equipment being delivered, and I'm leading this week's case presentations. Oh well, somehow I'll have to figure out how to do it. Um... Good morning. Yeah, just great, huh? I got work piled up to the ceiling. Okay, a cup of coffee is the only thing that can save me today. Now what? The last thing I need is to be late. The coffee maker started its cleaning cycle. She'll have to wait. <clears throat> What's the problem? Why don't you work? Are you going to work or what? <clears throat> oh, the poor coffee maker. Oh, Tom Thomas's poor mother. That's enough. Work already. <laughs> what is going on today? <laughs> hey, Mom, come on. Let me give it a try. I can't take any more of this. We've got to help her. I really hope nothing broke in there. Don't worry, we'll get it working. Just distract your mom. Mom, and what if the coffee maker just started working again right now? Would that save your day, you think? Mm-hmm. Early coffee makers would do nothing more than heat up the water and force it through the ground coffee. Today's generation of devices are often called coffee machines. They can do so much more and even remove the mineral deposits themselves. These machines can make your coffee any strength and add milk and sugar if that's how you like it. And most conveniently, they can grind the coffee beans right before brewing. Just press the button and the fresh cup of coffee is ready. And that aroma. The main thing with any coffee maker is to be nice to it. Then you just give it some time and it starts working by itself. That is just absurd. Restarting it is the first step. Simka, get over there and open and close that contact. Mm -hmm. You see? That's what I was talking about. A coffee maker isn't alive. It's a machine, that's all. Then how come you hit it like you did? Hmm. But if you're really nice to it and you pet it... Then she'll purr. Hear that? It liked that a lot. Coffee maker, blink to us when you're ready to start working. Turn on the display. Mm -hmm. See that? It answered us. <gasps> it behaves like it's really alive. Well, coffee maker, make coffee. It's impossible. Today, time for a little surprise. Just don't give up our secret. You fixed it somehow. What's your secret? It's simple. If you handle appliances with care, then they'll take care of you. <sighs> the magic taste of coffee was first appreciated in Arabia. And that's why the most well-known variety of coffee is called Arabica. Coffee trees grow throughout the world in mountain regions where the weather is warm and humid. The branches of coffee trees get covered with coffee berries. But to make the coffee drink, we don't need the berries, just the seeds inside. After the coffee beans are roasted and then ground, hot water is added. Different cultures serve coffee differently. Some serve it hot, some cold. With sugar, with milk, with ice cream, with cinnamon, with ginger, and even with salt and pepper. They say that coffee gives people energy and helps them from feeling tired. But it's important not to drink too much. Tom Thomas, you're a powerful wizard. <laughs> she believes it. <laughs> it's remarkable. I can't believe an ordinary coffee maker can be so emotional. <laughs> Poor thing. Forgive me, huh? And that's not all. If you take care of your coffee maker and you're nice to it, it can even, it can even sing a song. Oh, my dear Augustine, Augustine, Augustine. <laughs> I've got to be hearing things. <laughs> You've got me under your spell, Tom Thomas. Time to go. <laughs> Augustine. Huh. 
Oh, my dear Augustine, Augustine. Why did you start singing? Sorry, I got carried away. <laughs> and I got carried away. Sing me that song again, will you? Oh, my dear Augustine, Augustine, Augustine. Oh, my dear Augustine, everything's gone. The window. Oh, hi there. We're all up. Ugh, what are you doing? I'm washing our windows. Uh, it looks like that thing's doing the washing. You guessed it. It's a window washing robot. I borrowed it from a neighbor to try it out. We should buy one for ourselves. I don't get it. We've already got one robot. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, robot. So we'll have two. One for the floors and one for windows. I could clean the windows. But it can be dangerous work. <laughs> What's so dangerous about it? I'll just go and wash them right now. And instead of a robot, we'll buy something uh, useful. Like a skateboard for a boy. I've already got one. So you'll have two. Class. Uh-huh, if you say so. There just so happens to be a dirty window in your office. Let's see how you do with that one. Consider it done. Mm-hmm. And we'll clean the tiles with the robot. A window is much more than just a hole in the wall. Windows provide houses with light, ventilation, and views to the world outside. Modern windows are made with several layers of glass. Between each layer is a space that's filled with air. The air works as insulation to keep heat from escaping outside. Do you know how to tell how many layers of glass your window has? Just shine a flashlight at it. The number of reflections tells you the number of layers. Whoa, what an amazing appliance. Let's go and take a closer look. You really buy me a new skateboard, Dad? That's what I said, but first, I've got a window to wipe. All right, robot, we'll show you. Tom Thomas, Dad can show him himself. <laughs> we really live on a super high floor. Yeah, but the robot isn't afraid of heights. <sighs> I'll start from this corner. It'll take you forever that way. Admit it, the robot works better. We won't. We're gonna win this thing. Hey, what is he doing? I'm not sure. Huh? Mom! Mom! The robot made such a mess in there! It's impossible. Look! <laughs> Good joke. Just wait. Get how you're cleaning it. Easy. You can talk? You gotta be kidding. And you are misbehaving. You guys? You're the ones trying to stop me? You tried to make the robot look bad, so we had to defend it. It's only because my dad told me I'd get a skateboard. Yeah? For doing a bad thing? Ah, oh, aren't you ashamed of yourself? I am. You learned your lesson, and don't forget, Fixies look out for appliances. The dwellings of most ancient people had basically no windows at all. There may have been a hole up above for letting out smoke from a fire, but that was it. Later, people started splitting open their walls, but the openings were so small that very little light would ever get inside. The size of windows grew quite a bit over time. People would cover them with animal skins, fabric, paper, or wooden planks to protect themselves from the cold and the wind. When people learned how to mine valuable minerals, they began to cover window openings with thin sheets of a mineral called mica. Windows made of glass were very expensive, and only the richest people could afford them for their homes. But today, it's hard to imagine a window anywhere not covered in glass. <sighs> Everything's washed. And what about the outside? 
Forget it. I... I quit. Would you wash the back with the robot? Yeah, consider it done. Yeah, you're right. I see. It really is a great appliance. And that washer's defender is even better. You're right about that. Tish! The toothpaste. Astronaut food! Ready! Rocket ready! And who's flying to the sun? Me! I'm ready! Ooh. Real hero! Tom Thomas! Did you see? There it is! You nearly spoiled a vital experiment. Of global, interplanetary significance. Spoiled what? Our scientific testing of the latest toothpaste formula. I will brush my teeth with it. And I, as chief dentist, will be monitoring the testing. And so, I don't want you even touching it. Great. How am I supposed to fly to the sun now? Strange. They make that toothpaste for kids. So? Then why is your mom using your dad then? That's right. I'm gonna go tell her. Mom! That new toothpaste. I should test it. No, I'm using your dad, because he's a responsible person. And so am I. I'm very responsible. Who knew? Your room's a total mess. I had no time to clean it. You didn't water the plant. I forgot. Did you brush your teeth? Yeah, for a whole minute, too. You're supposed to brush your teeth for two minutes, in the morning and at night. Sorry. <laughs> Great toothpaste, honey. If you don't want to get a toothache, you need to take good care of your teeth by brushing them with a toothbrush and toothpaste. Toothpaste helps remove food that's stuck on your teeth, kills harmful bacteria, and keeps your teeth strong, healthy, and beautiful. Toothpaste should be in every house. Adults should use toothpaste made for adults, and kids should use toothpaste that is healthy and safe for younger teeth. It's important to make sure you're using a toothpaste that's right for your age. Tom Thomas, don't touch it! It's for the experiment! I'm just gonna smell it. Don't worry. Well... It smells like bubble gum. Hey! Just a peek at the collar, that's all. Come on, do you want to spoil the experiment? Now put that toothpaste right back. Hmm. Again? <laughs> well now, so we caught you again. I want to try this toothpaste so bad, but how? Well, what if you... <laughs> Do you know how to brush your teeth correctly? Let's check. First, take your toothbrush and rinse it with water. Then squeeze on a bit of toothpaste. A small pea-sized drop is all that you'll need. Now one, brush the outside of your front teeth up and down. Two, brush the backs of those teeth from the gums on down. Three, open your mouth real wide and brush the teeth in the back. These are the teeth that you use for chewing. Go back and forth, over and over. You should brush a full two minutes, no less. Now it's time to rinse out the toothpaste from your mouth and clean the brush. That's right, the brush needs to be cleaned too. And please, don't be lazy. If you brush your teeth two times a day, they'll stay in great shape for many years to come. Mom, Dad, see? I've done everything. Well done. And I promise that I'm gonna brush my teeth the right way, as long as I need to, and... And twice a day? 
only let me be a part of your awesome experiment, please, would ya? Well, I don't know. I think we could try it. Oh. What? Well, we also have this foam for teeth. Who's gonna test that? Me! A real hero. How many ways did we try to get him to brush his teeth before that didn't work? We never sparked his imagination before. Your idea about the experiment was brilliant. Simka, do you think we should tell him? The answer is no. We can't disrupt the experiment. <laughs> the bird feeder. What? Oh, again! Outside the window! There! Huh, a little bird. He's beautiful! Uh-huh, only he looks sad. Just wait till he sees what I'm gonna do! <laughs> I guess he doesn't think you're funny. That's because he's cold out there. He wants to eat, that's all. Maybe we should make a feeder for the poor bird. Do you know how to make a bird feeder? No, but we both know someone who knows everything. In the winter, it's not easy for birds to find food under the snow. Luckily, many people come to the rescue. They build little houses for the birds, designed to hold food. The name for these houses are naturally bird feeders. Bird feeders can be made out of wood, plastic, or even something as simple as a milk or juice carton. Building a bird feeder by hand isn't hard to do at all. But building it is only one part of the work. What's most important is remembering to keep it filled with food. Well, shall we start? An idea. Ah! Adisa, I need some of your food for a little bird. You aren't greedy. Greedy! 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 I didn't know Adisa is greedy. A geese is greedy. You need to learn how to share. A geese is greedy. What, like there's not enough food? Not enough food, not enough food, not enough food, not enough. Wow, now there's two of them out there. Eat, there's enough food for everybody. Poor Adisa, poor Adisa. Let's bring him in here. We can open a, a restaurant a for poor birds. little bird. Why did you scare the little birds away? That feeder's for them, get it? Just fly away. Shoo! Uh, 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 uh. He's bullying our friends. Hey, you leave! Leave! You'll never chase him away now. We'll see about that. Aha! Serves you right, Pigeon. It's not nice to bully little guys. Yeah, and how about big guys? It's all right to bully them. The poor Pigeon also wants some food. Food! Food! You sure? Sure! Winter can be beautiful, but also very cold. Animals have different ways to prepare for when the weather gets cold. Some birds gather into flocks and migrate to where it's warmer. You could almost say they're flying to a resort. Squirrels, hamsters, and chipmunks collect and store nuts, mushrooms, and pine cones. There are many people who don't have pantries that are as well stocked. Badgers and bears eat a lot of extra food in the fall and then go to sleep in their dens and burrows for the whole winter. 
Fish also sleep in the winter, only they're at the bottom of rivers and lakes. Frogs, snakes, and even wasps burrow in the ground, while hares, foxes, and wolves grow thick coats that protect them from the freezing cold. Although it isn't easy for them to find food. So that will be your feeder, and that new one will be for the little birds. Hey, are you taking their food again? There you go. Huh. But those little birds, they'll probably never come back here. Look, Nolik! <gasps> they came back! The spider. Chusaka, Chusaka. Tom Thomas, what are you doing? I'm petting Chusaka. How come? Because huh? it makes her feel good. Just don't rub her fur off. <laughs> You're just jealous, guys, because you don't have any pets of your own. What do you mean? We've got a pet. You who Buggy! Buggy! She was in the vent the last time I saw her. Hmm. Buggy! Come on out. We need to talk. Here, this is our friend, Buggy. Wait, this insect is really your pet? Ha! <laughs> what a joke. Buggy's a spider. She's not an insect at all. But isn't a spider a kind of insect? Insect is the term used for mosquitoes, flies, beetles, dragonflies, butterflies, ants, and many others. Spiders certainly look a lot like insects. They have very similar legs. But spiders aren't insects. They're arachnids. Insects have six legs, while spiders have eight of them. Many insects can fly, but spiders can't. But spiders can move spider webs. They may look beautiful, but really they are traps for hunting insects. How come your buggy has five legs instead of eight of them? I don't know. <laughs> she lost them somehow. Anyhow, she can do lots of tricks. Hello, buggy. How do you do? We know how to do that trick. Chusaka, shake. Just see that? And I bet your buggy can't do this. Chusaka, sit. Buggy, sit. Why aren't you sitting? Lie down. Your turn. Lie down. Watch me. Like this. Lie down. She can't do that trick. Her fifth leg must be in the way. Lie down. Lie down, I told you. What, what kind of pet are you anyway? You can't even do a simple trick. Hey, where are you going? Wait, Buggy, don't go. Nolik, you should be ashamed of yourself. But why is she acting? So stupid. <gasps> Didn't you say that she was your friend? And what? Well, you shouldn't yell at your friends like that. She's right. What kind of friend are you? I'll go find her. And apologize. Buggy! Do you hear me? to live with them in their homes. Dogs, cats, hamsters, parrots, fish, turtles. Some folks even get crocodiles. And the bigger the animal, the more work it takes to take proper care of it. But every pet needs love and care, no matter what size it is. Fixies like to have pets too. 
all sorts of little bugs, spiders, and flies. Pixies treat them as friends and take care of them. Of course, a little spider isn't as smart as a dog, but they also can be trained. There are some Pixies who have managed to domesticate such big insects as bees, beetles, and dragonflies. Pixies fly on their backs and use them to carry heavy loads. That's it. I'm stuck all alone in here. Forever. Simka? Oh, how did you find me? Buggy let me down here. Buggy, you didn't ditch me. I'm sorry. I promise I'll never ever yell at you again. Ow, my leg. Hang in there, Nolik. We'll get you out. It was so scary. You could have died down there. Yeah, I almost died. But you know what? Buggy saved me. Yeah, that's cooler than learning how to shake hands. Buggy sure is a true friend indeed. Does your leg really hurt a lot? Ah! <gasps> <laughs> nah, it doesn't really hurt. I'm fine. I was just joking. The helicopter. It's very important, and I need your advice. Hey, uh, sorry I'm late. Oh, girls, I can hardly wait to see this. Here it goes. Hey there. Where did you get a helicopter? Professor Eugenie threw it away, but we, we fixed it. Come fly with us, hop in. There's no way, we're busy. Doing what? Something important. Go find somewhere else to fly. You got it, no problem. Now back to our job. Stop it right now! You're bothering us! And and you're going to fall! Land on helicopter! We can't do it! But you're flying it! Why can't you land it? Because there's a controller! Digit's our pilot! Digit, fly on! Helicopters fly with the help of propellers. The biggest one is called the main rotor blade. When the engine turns it, the rotor pushes the air with such a powerful force that it lifts the helicopter up off the ground. Of course, helicopters can't fly as fast as airplanes, but they have the ability to easily land on a small patch of ground. And unlike airplanes, helicopters can hover in the air for a long time and even fly backwards. Digit, turn us to the left. Huh? Uh. <laughs> now, turn right and higher. Huh? Digit, uh. Fire and Nolik are being dopey, but you're smart enough to know it's dangerous. Just land it. Hang on, hang on. This is one amazing rotor-driven machine. Leonardo da Vinci himself had a design for one, and now look who's controlling it. It really is impressive. You're a total ace on that controller. And so smart. And brave. <laughs> the girls really like boys like that. That's how I roll. Sure, yeah, you're great. Now land it. Digit! <laughs> oh! Ah! The wall! <sighs> no, like, don't panic. We're gonna have to jump! Whoa! What about me? Ah! 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 Where's fire? Here! You could have crashed! And if it wasn't for us... If it wasn't for you distracting our pilot, everything would have been okay. A real pilot, you know, shouldn't get distracted. And first he has to learn how to fly on a simulator. Right, Digit? Uh-huh. That's true, but we don't have one. Don't go anywhere. Air 
airplanes, helicopters, trains, and even cars are complicated machines that can be a challenge to navigate. And if you don't watch what you're doing, you can easily end up having an accident. That's why future pilots, train operators, and drivers all take comprehensive training classes that include learning how to fly a plane or drive a train using simulators. This, for instance, is an exact copy of a cockpit, only without wings and with screens for windows. You pull the controller and the cabin moves the way it would if you were actually taking off. And on the screens, the Earth is racing under the clouds. It takes your breath away. Commercial pilots are required to take part in many simulations like this before they're allowed to pilot a real airplane. Our pilot simulator is ready to go. Oh, wow. And I'll be the first one to try it. Here we go. Uh, kids. Right, Digit? <coughs> I'm only going over there just to take a look. Uh, you know how those two can behave. I'll just and watch it's my them. Turn again. Hey, wait. It's my turn now. Boys are just silly. They're never serious. They just joke around. Speaking of serious, we have some important business to take care of. <gasps> You're right. I can't figure out where I should put them. What about on the pack -a mat Oh, that's a very serious problem. Yeah, this is really important, not something silly like those boys are doing. The virus. Johnny, you lose. You want to race him again? We can. We just finished the last level. Oh, we were just getting started. Wait a second. Let's see what it says here. Congratulations. Your prize is a smartphone and a collection of brand new levels to race. All right. Class, click on it. It's not smart to just click on random buttons. Hmm. There's nothing to worry about. Hey, what's going on? Someone messed with the numbers. There you go. Didn't I warn you guys? Do you think it might have been Johnny? Johnny! Of course! He got upset that we won, so he put on the cap of invisibility. Then he snuck into the room and deleted everything from the computer. Stop! What are you talking about? A cap of invisibility. This has nothing to do with Johnny at all. Looks like you got a virus. Then we need to get Tom Thomas's mom in here. What for? Isn't it obvious? She's a doctor. She'll get rid of this virus in no time. That won't work. Quit it. A computer with a virus isn't treated like that. A doctor won't be able to help here, especially a dentist like your mother. Then who can help us? You need special software for that. Antivirus. <laughs> A computer virus is a destructive computer program. It can not only delete or steal important information, but completely destroy your computer. And the scariest thing about this virus is that it spreads very quickly and can infect the other computers on the network, very much like a human illness. To find and stop these viruses, you need to use an antivirus program. Antivirus programs also protect computers against new infections. And by the way, your dad's computer uses antivirus software. And mine doesn't have it? No, you won't let anyone near your computer. You never have any time. Dad, let's do it later, okay? I've got to finish one more round. It'll only take a minute. Oh, look at that. The virus is starting to wipe out everything now. That means this computer will disappear. And this room, too. And... And all of us! Stop! Stop! Quit panicking! We have to save the computer right away! Tom Thomas, your dad has a box with antivirus software. Bring it!
Games, music, cartoons. There are so many interesting things on the internet, but just like in the physical world, you have to follow some rules when you're online. First, you should only visit websites that you know. Sometimes a destructive virus could be hiding behind a pretty picture, and there are plenty of scammers on the internet. That's why you should never give anybody you don't know well your address or send an SMS so you can download a free game. If you happen to get a letter or a text from a stranger, you should show it to your parents right away. Only communicate with people that you know. And don't just sit all day playing on the internet. There's still nothing better than going outside and playing with friends in the fresh air. the software. How come? There's no need. No, we have to. That program should only be installed by an adult. Otherwise, your parents will figure out you got help from Fixies. Sorry about that. All done. And here comes my dad. Dad, will you install this on my computer, please? You need it right away? How about a bit later? No, we can't keep putting it off. There you go. Now your computer is protected. How come you became so responsible all of a sudden? Oh, Dad, you don't know what kind of viruses are out there roaming the net. You're so right. Money. Hello? Uh-huh. Fire, can you help me, please? Sorry, Verda. I need to go to, uh, the warehouse right away. But I helped you yesterday, didn't I? Well, I helped you the day before that. Yeah, well, what about last week? I helped you three times, remember? Well, I... Uh... You helped one another when it was time to. I don't see why you have to count. Of course not, Tula. You ask for the most help from all of us. I do not, Verda. Look how Elisa helps Professor Eugenius. And she doesn't argue with him. Of course not. She's in love with the professor. Actually, it's her job. And for helping the professor, she gets money. Hmm, money. That's a smart idea. <laughs> money constantly moves from one hand to another. A person does his job at work, and in exchange, he gets money for it. He can use the money to buy things he wants, like clothing or food. Or he can pay somebody else for their work. Like getting a ride from a taxi driver, a haircut from a hairdresser, or a computer repaired by a technician. All people take part in this circulation of money. But unlike people, fixies don't use any money. We do just fine without it. From now on, we'll do it like people do it. If you work for somebody, they give you money for it. And if you need some help, then you pay. And that'll stop the arguing. And all the false accusations. And those are for Simka and Dola. Now it's all fair. supposed to do with it? You don't know? You pay for someone to help you. I don't like this new idea at all. At all.
our money. So to stop arguing, I've got a cooler idea. Hey, who needs money around here? Cause we've got it! Now there's enough for everybody! Where are you? We're in here! Your fault, Fire. And your fault. No, it's the money. That's whose fault it is. He's right. That's why we were fighting. And we didn't even fix the printer. Money is nothing more than just paper. <laughs> Although money is printed in strict secrecy, we still know something about the process. The paper used for money is made out of cotton and linen. It's stronger than normal paper made out of wood, which means it doesn't rip as easily, even if you fold it thousands of times. The ink used for printing money is special, too. It won't rub off the paper or fade in the sun. And that's not all. The ink has secret additives that can only be seen if you look at the money under a special light. This helps protect people from fake money. It is for the same reason that watermarks, metal strings, and teeny tiny writing is also used on money. This writing's very hard to read, unless you happen to be a fixie. I hope I didn't say more than I should have. Well, all done. It's time for a test. But what are we going to print? A word with real value. Yeah, something really precious. No, it's not money. Right, it's so much better. Friendship! Tish! Plastic. Chuggy, go! Chuggy, go! Keep Chun, going! Faster! You can do it! Faster! Come, Come on! Chug, so chug! Close. Oh, chug! Chug, chug! You're go, almost go. there! Tish! That was one fast time. If you could just keep up your training, you could beat the record. <sighs> yes. Yes, you're right. Time to take matters into our own hands. Please hold on. Tom Thomas, did you take out the trash? Uh, I didn't have time yet. Good. That's just what I wanted to hear. Uh, and that bottle on your desk, do you need it? That's great. Thanks. I've got five more of them. And this is only the beginning of our mission. Operation Rescue. What is your dad up to? Operation Rescue. Could be... Your dad might be a superhero. Do you think? <laughs> no, like, you're too funny for words. What's so funny about that? Who else would be taking part in rescue operations? <laughs> and those bottles, you think he needs them for heroic deeds? Or maybe he decided that it's time to sort your plastic waste. Do, Do what? what? Plastic is a durable and practical man-made material. Lots of useful things are made out of it. Packaging, toys, appliances, and even furniture. But you shouldn't just throw out things that are made of plastic. Nature can't digest it, and so all that plastic will leave the Earth covered with a thick layer of trash. To avoid that catastrophe, we all can help. Put plastic into specially marked containers, and then, instead of harming the planet, it can be turned into something useful. No, that doesn't make any sense. Simka, superheroes do not collect trash. And we'll prove it, you'll see. Of course. It's our evolution. I mean, a revolution. Together, we'll save planet Earth. You're so lucky, Tom Thomas. Together, we'll save planet Earth. Tom Thomas, do you have any more plastic in your room here that I can take? One second. You still use those things. For such a noble mission, it's not a problem. All our useful things should be taken care of. 
Dad, I really want to do it with you. Want to do what? What you're doing. You know, the operation. About saving the planet, like you said on the phone. Ah, you mean sorting out the plastic, don't you? Sure. I've got a couple of these boxes filled up already. Will you help me take them to get recycled? Really? What for? Just dump it out with the trash. Son, if we don't start doing what we can to recycle, I'm afraid our planet <sighs> will become one big dump. There's lots of stuff that humans just throw out that can be transformed into something totally different. For instance, an ordinary plastic bottle can be turned into a ballpoint pen, or a watch, or a chair, or dishes, or even some clothing. For example, there are some factories where old plastic is sorted, ground into pieces and cleaned, and then stretched into thread that can be used to make brand new clothing. Isn't that fantastic? But this is only possible if people learn to collect and dispose of unneeded bottles, bags, cups, and other plastic separately from the rest of their trash. Imagine how happy nature will be when the piles and piles of plastic disappear from our woods and from our seas. Let's take care of our planet together. I thought you were trying to rescue the planet, like a superhero. Actually, we are superheroes, and we're also a bit like magicians. Really? Give me a second. See this shirt here? It's made out of recycled plastic like that. Cool, right? No joke! So, you ready? Then it's time to go. Uh, those lucky humans with their trash to sort, and we? We fixies do all that we can to make appliances live longer. That way they don't get thrown away. And we should sort our trash as well. That's a good idea. The Time Machine. Oh, wow! What kind of device is that? Maybe an alarm clock? No, this is a time machine! Beep, 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 beep! Time machines, they don't exist. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> what a shame. I learned that, studied that. Well done, Tula. Oh. What did I just bump into? What do you mean, what? Into a time machine. But I thought time machines aren't for real. Of course they are. You get in and take off for the future. Or the past. Splendid. Lots of us would love to be able to travel in a time machine. Maybe to go back in time and fix a bad grade. Or to get a peek into the future. Of course it would be interesting. But time travel isn't possible. And thank goodness. Just imagine how mixed up everything could get. Someone brings back a dinosaur from the past, while someone else brings aliens from the future. No one would need to invent anything. Appliances would sit unused, and fixies would have no work to do. It's awful! So you've got no idea of the answer. I studied this, but I don't remember. Too bad, because tomorrow we've got a hard test. Make sure you're prepared. I'm sure I'm gonna fail. You're gonna pass? You studied all of this, right? So? So you just need to stop worrying so much, that's all. I wish I could. <laughs> Poor girl. How can we help her? Hey, I know how. This morning, Tula believed that that thing over there is a real time machine. Sounds like an anti-scientific plan. Stop worrying. It's simple. We'll send you to tomorrow. You'll sit down, take the test, and come right back here. I wish I could go. It's like a dress rehearsal. The main thing's not to worry. Then what do I do? Uh, you just pull on that wire and you'll get them back. Well, time to go. Wow, it's tomorrow. Hi there. Are you ready? Uh-huh. Grandpus got sick, so I'll be giving you your tests. I'm scared. Don't worry, it's just a rehearsal. Well then, who had the best test? Congratulations, Tula! Oh, so cool! Awesome! That wasn't scary at all! Impressive! By the way, what's 
What's wrong with the professor? Uh, Grandpa's... Uh, you know, don't you? A bolt fell on his head. You dropped it, remember? I did? Yeah, yesterday. I'm not sure I like this future. Well, how did it go there? Later. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. Oh! Leave this on until tomorrow. What is this? Come back! No! If I do, I could hurt you! Me? What for? Wouldn't it be incredible to travel into the future and see what you will become? Unfortunately, that's only possible in our dreams. But if you have a dream and aren't afraid of challenges and setbacks, your future can turn out just the way you imagined. Do you want to become a champion? Then you need to start your training right away. Do you dream of becoming the best programmer in the world? Then first pull up that grade in math class. Do you dream of sailing the oceans? Then you'll need to do a lot of reading because a captain has so much he needs to learn. Start creating your future right now. And we Fixies will be right there to help you, making sure the machines you need to reach your dreams will keep on working for years and years to come. Hey there, are you ready? Uh-huh. So far, everything's exactly the same. Tula, take this, please. It worked. And pass out the tests. You may begin. These questions are different. Who had the best test? Congratulations, Tula! What am I worried about? I know everything is going to be fine. Tish! Oh, uh, well then. All of your test results are great. <sighs> Only none of you could guess what this device is. What do you mean? Isn't it a time machine? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's for <laughs> automatically watering plants, that's all. You see? Right? Wow, it's fantastic. So hang on. You guys tricked me? But you passed the test, right? Well, all right. Then I forgive you. <laughs> <laughs> the submarine. And the submarine disappeared into the ocean deep, leaving the vicious sharks high and dry. Ugh, that cartoon was super. Class. Splendid! Uh, I wish we had a submarine, too. What do you say we make one? But we don't know anything about building a submarine. What makes you say that? <laughs> the most important thing for a submarine is to be airtight so that it's impossible for water to leak in from outside. And inside, there needs to be a reserve of air for breathing. For a submarine to go underwater, it uses special containers. When the containers are filled with water, the submarine becomes heavy and starts submerging. When it's time to take the submarine back up to the surface, the water in the containers is switched back for air and the light submarine climbs. And what are we going to make it out of? Out of, uh, broken toys. And where are we going to sail her? In the aquarium. Tula, that's silly. Nolik's little and he's not scared of this. Yeah! Well, all right. Cast off the lines! The who? Unhook the rope, it means. Ah! Oh, you should have just said that. Are you ready? Time to take her down. Hooray! We're sailing! It's just beautiful in here. There they are, the fish is sharks. Time to scare them. Turning right. Go away for that one. You can't escape <gasps> from us. Please stop come it. Come on, come on, come stop on. Stop torturing the yeah. fish, it's terrible. <laughs> what? Oh, what oh, was no. that? I don't know. There's algae wrapped around the propeller. I want my mom 
else here. Just be calm. There's no need to panic. Let's try taking her up. It's not working. Of course. No wonder I was scared. And so what do we do now? How about we open the hatch door? No, we can't. The water would pour into here, and then we would all drown. Well, in that case, I don't know. I need to come up with a plan. Yeah. <sighs> The world's first practical submarine was built almost 400 years ago in England. It was made out of wood and couldn't dive very deep at all. Inside the vessel, rowers sat with oars, so it couldn't move very quickly either. About 200 years later, the oars were replaced with a propeller. But the propeller on that submarine could only be turned by hand, making it a slow submarine as well. Any good swimmer could easily outrace it. It was only with the appearance of electric motors that submarines started submerging to great depths and moving through the water at very high speeds. Today's modern military submarines use nuclear reactors for power. These submarines can stay underwater for months without resurfacing. Come up with your plan quicker, because we're running out of air. Fire, we're gonna suffocate. No, we won't, mate. <gasps> ah! oh! Oh! Chances are better the fish will eat us. You never should have teased them. Yeah, we're oh. in trouble. Ah! Oh! Ah! Ah! Didn't I warn you, didn't I? And you wouldn't listen. You did everything just the opposite. Wait, it might work. Let's rewire the battery the opposite way. We should switch the plus and minus. How come? Because then the motor will start to turn the other way, forcing the algae to unwind. Finish! Hey, quit it! We won't bother you anymore, all right? Peace. Thank you so much, Tula. You really saved us. It's just because I was the one that was most frightened. No, it's because when things got really scary, you kept your cool about you. Wouldn't it be splendid if next time we built a helicopter? The dishwasher. Can't catch me. You won't catch me. <laughs> Enjoying yourself? Without a care in the world. What? We have more cares than both of you together. Yeah, anyone can see that. Wanna bet me? How about we try doing your job and you try doing ours? And whoever loses has gotta grant the other's wish. We have a dishwasher here in the kitchen that isn't working, and you're distracting us with your nonsense. Wait a sec. Let's do it. Find the broken part. Good as done. Find it where? <laughs> you're the adults now. Go and find it. Just look out for yourselves. And you kids, time for school. And I better not hear that you were misbehaving. Was I there when they taught us about dishwashers at school? <laughs> the main element of a dishwashing machine is this part called the sprayer, which looks like a propeller. After the dishwasher's pump delivers water, it is warmed, mixed with detergent, and then pushed up with high pressure. That makes the propeller spin very quickly, so it can shoot out the water with a force strong enough to wash all of the dirt off the plates and glasses. But it does it carefully, so that dishes not only come out sparkling, but unbroken as well. Is this a parent-teacher conference? It's not. It's an experiment. For today, I'm Simka. <laughs> and I'm Nolik. All right. Who's ready to tell the rest of the class what we studied yesterday? Simka. Yesterday? Oh. You forgot. Be seated. That's an F. Mm-hmm. I think the problem is in the control panel. I wonder if the dishwasher ran out of water. Ah. Uh. Papus, don't argue with your wife. Yoink. This one is working. And so is this. Wash 
those dishes. But that would be cheating. No one will find out. The dishes will all be nice and clean, and bam, we're the winners. Check it out, we are all done. How come the indicators aren't lit? Fixies have to fix things. And what do you call this? And you, did you both go to school today? Of course we did. I, I mean Simka, got an F for her answer. Well, thanks, Marcia. And did you play with Tom Thomas? You know that we don't show ourselves to people. Tom Thomas isn't any human. He's our friend. Either you play with him, or you both lose, just like we did. No way. We'll play another round. The earliest kitchenware appeared about 7,000 years ago. Early people made these containers from stone or wood. Another kind of container for holding food was woven baskets. The baskets would be lined with clay for durability. Once, one of these baskets fell into a bonfire, and lo and behold, the wood on the outside burned away, while the clay was now hard as a rock. That discovery led to the invention of clay pottery that is still in use to this very day. Later on came the development of glass, metal, and cast iron cookware. The world's richest people can even have food served to them on dishes of silver or gold. Today, kitchenware is not only a practical convenience, but it can decorate any home as well. Forget it. This is impossible. Let's just tell them we give up. Zinka, how come this button is crooked and not sticking out? Because the button got jammed! Yeah! No way! You figured out what was wrong! I'm glad I kept dragging this around. Diddy! One. Papus, two, we fixed everything! Really? Three, Does this mean you're playing with him? Four, what? You think we're some quitters? Ha! Then which one of us is the Ready winner? Or not, here I come. Let's call it a draw. Each team gets one wish. Our team wants you to fix my app. And you finish this game with him. Piece, Piece of, of cake. cake. Mm. Fasteners. And of course, all of the appliance's parts must be fastened good and tight. What are you doing, colleague? Today, Lisa is returning from her vacation. And so, I decided before she gets back, I'll clean up the laboratory. Quite a noble initiative. Now, where was I? You were saying all parts have to be fastened. <laughs> You're right. And what kinds of fasteners can you name? Fire? Uh, a screw? Mm-hmm. And what else? Uh, another screw? <laughs> that would make... A total of two screws altogether. Simka? To fasten wood or plastic parts together, you can use nails. Nails are hammered in with a hammer. In metal or stone, you need to first drill holes for the screws. To help a screw hold better, it can be inserted into a special fastener called an anchor or wall plug. The difference between a machine screw and a wood screw is that wood screws have pointy ends. Machine screws go into holes that already have a thread, or into a nut. And what if there aren't any screws or nails around? Well, then a fixie can turn himself into a screw and screw himself in, like this. Masterfully done. Fire, think you can do it? Of course. Yeah! Nolik? Is it okay? If I won't go... What do you mean, you won't go? <sighs> Wait, I started on the wrong foot. Uh, no, I, I guess it was the right one. Don't be scared. You've done this a thousand times. Uh-huh. You're right. You had to make sure the appliance was turned off first. <sighs> yeah, I should have. This time it's not going to happen to you. It's all under control. Go on. I'm still scared to do it.
How about you try again? And who came up with this dumb screw idea? According to legend, the screw was invented in ancient times by the great Archimedes. Using his screw-type mechanism, Archimedes built a special machine for getting water out of a canal. In ancient Rome, people used wooden screws and presses to squeeze the olive oil out of olives. Screws were also used as parts of drills or as lifting jacks. But the use of screws as fasteners did not begin until the 15th century. Soon thereafter, screws became so popular that today it's almost impossible to find an appliance made without one. And if one of these little screws should fall out, we fixies will come to the rescue. Because we don't just turn into screws when we need to hide from humans. We're always ready to do it when help is needed. Noli, let's try it together. Don't be scared, we're here with you. Ready? And... <gasps> Nolik, watch me, son. I haven't screwed myself in in over a hundred years, but I'm not scared. Did you see that? It's a piece of cake. Grandpus? I'm stuck. It's all my fault. There's no need to worry. Professor Eugenius, can you help us unscrew Grandpus? I'll be right with you. It got a bit rusty. It's probably old age. I know what will help. A drop of oil. Ow! Professor Eugenius, are you okay? I'm okay. Thank you for asking. Look out! It's going to fall! We need to fasten the shelf to the wall! No, help! We can't do this! Simka, I'm scared too. Nolik, save me! Uh, uh. <sighs> What's going on out there? No big deal, colleague. I just got a little bit buried. <clears throat> Will anyone unscrew me? I wish I could. And we're holding up the shelf. And Nolik? Me too. I did it. I screwed myself in. Well done, Nolik. I knew you could. And who's going to help us now? Elisa will get here shortly. All right. We'll wait for Elisa. Yeah, just as long as her return flight isn't delayed. <sighs> <sighs> the frying pan. Skates and still do it. If I was on skates, I could jump ten times in a row. Well, I could do a hundred with my eyes shut. Then let's see them. There's no skating rink. There will be. What will there be? A skating rink. Where? In the frying pan. Uh-oh. All right, my bragging buddies. Go get your skates. Fixies love playing sports. You might find Fixie adults working out with weights or maybe working on a gymnastics routine. Fixie kids love having Fixie board contests or taking part in parkour competitions where they have to run, jump, and hop over all sorts of obstacles. These kinds of competitions usually take place inside of sophisticated appliances. Orienteering is held inside these appliances, too. That's when Fixies use a map to follow a complicated route. And the route is quite exact. You can't make one wrong turn. But the Fixies' favorite game has got to be hide-and-seek. Nobody can compete with them in this game. You don't believe me? <laughs> Watch! The rink is frozen. <laughs> So, who's first? Nola, come on! <laughs> well, are you going to jump? <laughs> wow, class! <laughs> and that's all? Not at all. No lick! No lick! No lick! No He's lick! not gonna make it. Too short a start. <laughs> I can't do anymore because I'm injured. Sure, say no more. 
Mr. Braggart. Then it's your turn, Simka. Now watch and see how it's done. La 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 Oh, wow. Nolik, you never had a chance. Always. She gets in my way, and now she's gonna win. Nolik, do you really want to beat her? Uh-huh. You see the salt? What? You think we should cook her? Of course not. But if we put some salt on the ice, it'll melt. Simka, didn't you say that you were gonna skate with your eyes closed? Piece of cake. What? Can't do it? Watch and learn. One. And two. Well done. And three. Hey, this is salt. That wasn't fair, guys. You wouldn't have done a hundred jumps anyway. Let's start the contest all over again. But this time we play by the rules. Oh. Look, there's a scratch in the pan. What? What a disaster. You can cook just about anything in a frying pan. Meat, fish, vegetables. In order to stop food from sticking to the pan, modern frying pans are covered with a non-stick coating like Teflon. You can cook in these pans without even using oil. And they're easy to clean. But you have to treat this kind of kitchenware very carefully. It's better not to use metal spatulas or forks that can scratch it. Because you shouldn't cook food in a pan that has scratches on it. It can be really dangerous for your health. Yeah, this pan's completely shot. It's all because of your dumb bet. It's all because someone was cheating. Mom's back. Please, Simka, help me out, will you? I'll give you any wish you want. Or three. No, five. Five? <laughs> I can help you. If you guys jump up and down a hundred times on one leg, we could do 200. Tom Thomas, what do you say we make those crepes? Mmm, these crepes are perfect. I just love cooking with this pan. Why are you jumping? I want to make my legs stronger. <laughs> Anyway, you never could have jumped a hundred times in there. Bet on it? Uh-uh. <laughs> Concrete. When will you be back from your fishing trip? Before dinner. So you won't have time to hang up the mirror again? Hm. If it's not one thing, it's another. Um, we were just planning to hang it right now. Uh, it'll only take us two minutes, and then we'll go fishing. What do you want, Nolik? When am I going to go on a fishing trip with you? You know fixies don't go fishing. But you promised me that today we will go and visit the aquarium. I was only planning on going there to clean it. So let's go fishing while we're at it. We'll pretend. Poppers, please. Okay, Nolik. But we'll just pretend to. Hooray! You're the best poppers ever! Nah, those won't work. Why won't they? Because our walls are concrete. They're much too hard for nails. See that? It's gonna need to be drilled. Hmm, I guess we'll need to use a special drill bit that's right for this wall. Concrete is a very strong building material made out of small stones, sand, cement, and water. When the concrete mixture dries, it becomes very hard, like a solid piece of rock. For building houses, bridges, and other large constructions, reinforced concrete is what people use. To reinforce the concrete, it is poured into a mold with steel bars. When you drill into a reinforced concrete wall, you have to be careful not to hit the metal bars. Humans. Mm-mm. 
Not big enough. It won't hold up this mirror. But it's all we've got. <sighs> so we'll have to go and buy another. That stinks. Means there's no time to go fishing now. Actually, I think this will hold it for a little while. <clears throat> that looks great. So, ready? We don't, but we'll figure it out. I really don't like how that mirror's hanging. That's what happens when people are in a rush to finish. We're fixies. We never do things like that. Papoose, we going fishing or not? Yes, we will. After we take care of this mirror. In ancient Rome, volcanoes helped make concrete. After they erupted, people would mix the volcanic ash with stones, lime, and sand. This concrete was used in many of the famous buildings constructed in that time. For instance, the Pantheon with its concrete dome. And this one is the famous Colosseum. It was also made with concrete. The Colosseum is almost 2,000 years old, but it's still standing strong. Later, when that land was conquered by other nations, people forgot about concrete and how to make it. Thank goodness that 200 years ago, they suddenly realized what a great material it is, and they reinvented concrete. It's true when they say, oh, everything new is well forgotten old. Papoose, carry on. Haste is the mother of imperfection. Hmm, it looks like I ran out of wire. Mm, lousy timing. I've got to get to the warehouse. Warehouse? That means we're not going fishing. No, Lick. A promise is a promise, and that means we go. Eh, this should hold for a little while. <laughs> it's funny. We almost left without the fishing rods. Don't panic. We did a good job of anchoring. Remember what I said? Haste is the... Yeah. Yeah, I'm not hearing things. Looks like a trip to the store after all. For screws? Yeah, and a brand new mirror. It looks like today's fishing trip's canceled. And ours is too, Nolik. At least the fish will be happy.